friends, this video on morphology of flowering plants part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We are going to talk about the underground stems. Now we will see the stems which grow under the soil. Because like, unlike we used to think in our junior classes that stems would always mean something which is aerial. But it is not like that. We do have underground stems as well. In underground stems, again, we will talk about four different types of underground stems. So, what are those four different types? We will talk about rhizome. Okay, let me just mention the four types of underground stems that we will talk about. We will talk about rhizome, we will talk about tuber, we will talk about bulb, we will talk about corm. So, these are the four types of underground stems that we will talk about. So let us start our discussion with rhizome. So these are thick stems which grow horizontally under the soil. Nodes and internodes are present. Examples would be ginger and turmeric. So if you look at this turmeric plant, what are these? These are the roots. What kind of roots are there? These are nothing but the fasciculated, these are nothing but the adventitious roots, right? Adventitious roots with tubers, that is with swollen nodules. The nodules type of root modification. We have talked about this root modification, right? Before. So now we are talking about the stem modification. So how are the stems modified here? They actually have very thick stems which grow horizontally under the soil. So the stems of these kinds. So here you can see these are nothing but the turmeric. So their stems are very thick and they grow under the soil. They will have nodes and internodes present. So examples are ginger and turmeric. So here the adventitious roots arise from the nodes of the stem. So these adventitious roots which I am talking about they arise from nodes. Here axillary and terminal buds are also present and they give rise to the aerial branches under favorable conditions. So here you can also see some aerial branches, right? So these aerial branches arise from the axillary and terminal buds. They remain underground and they remain unaffected during unfavorable conditions. Now since they are underground, so they are not much affected by wind or rain or things like that. So they remain unaffected during unfavorable condition. Now, for, for these examples which I mentioned just now, for example, ginger or turmeric, they are edible things, right? We eat them. So, which is the edible part? The edible part of ginger or turmeric is nothing but the rhizome, that is the stem. The, the portion of the plant which we eat is nothing but the stem. Now, many people have this misconception that the edible part of ginger is the root. But it is not like that. Actually, it is the rhizome or it is the underground stem of a, a ginger which is actually edible. So, please remember that the edible part, edible part of a ginger is nothing but the rhizome. And rhizome is nothing but the underground stem. So, it is not the root but the stem which is actually edible. Now, if you look at this picture of a ginger, we can actually label them. So if you see these line structures, so these are nothing but the nodes. These are basically the nodes and the space between any two nodes is nothing but the internodes that you already know, right? This is node, again this is a node, again this is a node. And then the space between them is nothing but internodes. Now, at certain places, you would have actually seen that over the nodes, you will actually have small leaf-like structures like this. So, those leaf-like structures are nothing but the scale leaf. And what are roots? From these nodes, you, you would have also seen that some thin hair-like structures arise. Sometimes if you observe the ginger very closely, you will see that from the nodes, small hair-like structures arise. So they are nothing but they denote the roots. So this is how 
So basically, which is the edible part of the ginger? This entire thing is edible. And what is this entire thing? This is nothing but the rhizome. Because a stem always has nodes and internodes. And that is why this ginger also has nodes and internodes. Right? Ste nodes and internodes are present on the stem. But this is present under the soil. So this is underground stem. So this is the rhizome. So this entire portion of the ginger is rhizome. Okay. So let us now talk about the next type of underground stem that is tuber. So what is a tuber? It is a swollen tip of stem under the soil. So these kind of stems will actually have a swollen tip. That means the stem will be slender but the tip will be swollen. So the best example would be a potato plant. So potato, in case of potato also, the edible part is nothing but the swollen tuber. So the stem is the edible part. So here you can see, this is the potato, this is the plant. And if you actually see, these are nothing but the stems. These are not the roots basically. So if you see, they have got these kind of stems with a swollen end. So these kind of stem modification is known as tuber and this is also underground. So nodes and internodes are present. It actually helps in the purpose of this is food storage. It helps in storing food. Birds are also present. The best example is a potato. So here in this potato I can actually show you where are the nodes and the internodes. You can see the small dots which you actually see on a potato. What are they? They are referred as the eye of a potato. You generally refer these dots as eye. And each eye is subtended by a leaf scar. Somewhat very similar to an eyebrow like structure. You would have seen that these kind of structures are present just above these dot like structures. And these are nothing but the leaf scars. Now, what is this eye? This eye is nothing but it actually denotes the axillary bud. It denotes the axillary bud and this axillary bud gives rise to the rhizome which terminates in a swollen tuber. So this axillary bud from this eye or from this axillary bud a rhizome will be formed and that rhizome will gradually form a tuber that is a swollen tip of stem. So it is basically the swollen tuber which is edible in case of a potato. So each eye in a potato is capable of giving rise to a new plant in the following season. So you would have actually seen that when you, you if you have but when you store potatoes in your house when the potato is very very old you often see that there are some structures which are coming up from these uh, eyes or these buds small uh, stem like structures or small root kind of a structure coming up from the potato so that actually shows that those eyes are the places from where a new plant can actually come up the following season so tuber is one the next underground stem let us now talk about the third type of underground stem that is bulb. It is an underground condensed stem with fleshy leaves. So fleshy leaves is a unique feature of bulb. So example of bulb would be an onion. So here the leaves are arranged in a concentric fashion. Just, rem just imagine the structure of an onion. So what happens in an onion? The leaves play a very important role. You have layers of leaves. So they, all the layers are arranged in a concentric fashion. Concentric means you have something at the center and then you have leaves arranged in this fashion. One layer after the another, one layer after another. And that is how the leaves of an onion or a garlic is arranged. So examples would be onion and garlic. So here a terminal bud is present at the center. If you actually look at the center of an onion, there is a terminal bud which is present at the center and which is surrounded by these leaves which are fleshy. Now, these buds give rise to aerial shoot, the terminal bud which I am talking about. They give rise to aerial shoot that bears flowers and base of the bulb bears adventitious roots. So, here you can see these adventitious roots. This is the base of the bulb and from here arises the aerial shoot. 
So in case of garlic and how does an onion differ from a garlic? In case of a garlic, it is not only one bulb, but it is actually a combination of many bulblets to form a bigger bulb. So have you observed that there is a difference in the structure of an onion and a garlic? If you look at a garlic, it is actually composed of many different bulbs like this. Many different separate separate pieces are there and they have been combined together to form one garlic. So each of this part, these part is a bulb in itself. So many bulbs together combine to form a bigger bulb. That is the case in case of a garlic. But in case of an onion, one single onion is one bulb. Right? So if you look at this onion, these are the adventitious roots at the base of the bulb. If you look at these leaves, these leaves are nothing but the scale leaves. This entire structure, the entire structure of an onion is a bulb. And this basal portion is termed as the basal plate of the onion bulb. Right? So here in onion also, the fleshy leaves help in food storage. The last and the fourth type of underground stem is the corn. Corn is a combination of bulb and tuber. So it is often termed as bulbo tuber because bulb plus tuber. So it, is, it also has a swollen base of underground stem. It grows upright. Circular nodes and internodes are present. They also help in food storage. Example is amorphophallus. So what is amorphophallus? It is often termed as ol or genikan in India. We often call it with those names. It, this is also an edible vegetable. So it is generally sort of spherical in shape. It is also thick, stout and very, very fleshy. So if you look at the nodes and internodes here, you actually see that these are some circular structures. As you can see here, roughly circular structures. So we say circular nodes and internodes are present. If you look at the nodes, they actually give a ring-like structure with thin leaves. So if you actually try to imagine it like this, some ring-like structures. So they are the nodes. And their base again bears adventitious roots. Here again you can see some small adventitious roots coming out. Under favorable conditions, the aerial shoot arrives from the axillary bud. The basal part becomes thick to form new cones. So this also helps in storage of food. So this is basically a combination of bulb and tuber because they have a swollen base. That is why it is similar to a tuber. Since it also is, this is fleshy and it helps in storage of food. That is why, it, that is how it is similar to a bulb. So corn is basically a bulb or tuber. So these were some of the modifications of stem, the aerial stems, the subaerial stems as well as the underground stems. So we actually saw that stems not only perform their basic functions of transporting water and minerals from root to different parts of the plant, they also perform so many variety of other functions like food storage, performing photosynthesis, uh, acting as defense organs for the plants. So they actually serve a variety of purpose. So keeping all these things which we have discussed so far in mind, we can actually have a look at the importance of stem. They support leaves, branches, flowers and fruits which is a very basic function. They conduct water and nutrients from root to other parts of the plant. Food storage for example in the tuber of potato or the bulb of an onion or the corn of amorphophallus, they all help in food storage. Helping, helping photosynthesis, for example, the phylloclads, phylloclads in cactus helps in photosynthesis. Similarly, the cladode of a ruscus plant also helps in photosynthesis due to the presence of chlorophyll. Defense, for example, the stem thorns being pointed and thorny structures, they actually act as organs of defense. Mechanical support. Again, we have uh, the climbers, the stem tendrils, which actually help the plants provide a great mechanical support. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, 
find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.